Hello everyone and welcome. Today is a great day and that's because I'm sitting in a 2016 Nissan GTR. This isn't just any GTR, this is the Nismo GTR. Tuned by Nismo, 600 horsepower out of a 3.8 liter twin turbo engine. Yes, this is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and start it up and go for a quick test drive. Beautiful sound starting it up put it into the automatic mode. Let's push some of these R buttons. That's got to do some cool stuff, right? R. 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 All right. Who knows what that did? So the brilliant thing about this is I didn't expect to be driving this, so I didn't put much research into figuring out all the specs on this car. So I'm going to be driving it kind of blind, which is kind of cool because it'll be a genuine experience. Uh, I don't know anything about it, so it's not going to give me any bias. So let's put it down into first gear and good God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right i just went from like zero to 20 in uh less than the blink of an eye and it has me cracking up this thing's a monster i need a racetrack i need a racetrack right now i can't contain myself i'm gonna get a speeding ticket in about three seconds okay speed limit's 40 i'm in fourth gear godzilla be tame now, before diving more into this test drive, let's get a little more detail on the car. This is a two-door coupe featuring extensive Nismo modifications over the standard GTR. The base GTR Nismo starts at about 150000 while the MSRP of the car that I'm currently testing rings in at 165780 primarily due to a nearly $13,000 weight-reducing titanium exhaust. As far as aerodynamics are concerned, the Nismo's front bumper, engine undercover, and rear spoiler increase downforce. 220 pounds more than the standard GTR while traveling at 185 miles per hour. The center of pressure is managed well from the front to rear to optimize handling, and yet the vehicle maintains the same drive coefficient of 0.26 as the standard GTR. Under the hood is a hand-built 3.8 liter twin turbo engine. This one was assembled by Mr. Tetsushi Matsumoto, so many thanks to him as I've loved driving this. Dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, plasma sprayed cylinder bores, 9 to 1 compression ratio, and aluminum block and heads. The engine produces 600 horsepower at 6,800 RPM and 481 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM, with a maximum engine speed of 7,000 RPM. This is 55 horsepower and 18 pound-feet over a standard GTR, thanks in part due to large diameter high-flow turbochargers, which are also used in GT3 competition. The engine torque passes through a six-speed dual-clutch transmission, which can pre-select the next highest or next lowest gear for incredibly quick gear shifts. From there, it can send up to 100% of the torque to the rear wheels, or as much as 50% to the front wheels depending on the speed, lateral acceleration, steering angle, tire slip, surface conditions, and yaw rate. Up front, lightweight aluminum 20-inch raised wheels wrapped in 255 over 40 Dunlop rubber cover massive 15.35-inch vented and drilled rotors with Brembo six-piston calipers. This is matched with a double wishbone suspension uniquely tuned for the Nismo with reduced weight and increased roll stiffness. In the rear, wider 285 over 35 rubber rides around 15-inch vented and drilled rotors with Brembo four-piston calipers. This is matched with an aluminum multi-link suspension. All right, let's check out the interior. Okay, so checking out the interior, sitting in the driver's seat actually really snug, holds you in really well, electronically adjustable, so there's plenty of space for your legs, your knees aren't coming into contact with anything, and then you do kind of have a soft area here. So overall, it's plenty comfortable, though as far as how much space there is, it's somewhat more restricted. Um, it's just you're in a kind of a narrower compartment. Now the steering wheel, you've got plenty of controls on it, so you've got your Bluetooth controls, your phone controls, volume for your stereo and things like that, as well as your cruise control here on the right. Now moving on to the infotainment system, you've got a nice size screen up here, uh, plenty of controls, all the usual stuff. You know, it even has navigation, so you can, you know, you can get lost in the GTR and then find your way home, which is nice. You also have the dual zone climate control here, simple settings with your fan speed in the center. Now moving on to the fun section, what we've got going on here is three different controls, and so these are going to be changing the way that this vehicle drives. So here on the left, we have the transmission settings, so we can put it in normal, save, uh, which essentially you're going to be using uh, higher gears more often. It's going to be keeping the RPMs lower uh, and the gear shifts aren't going to be as quick. Or you can put it up into R. It'll be a little bit more aggressive uh, with the downshifting. It'll stay in lower gears longer and it also actually will legitimately shift faster when it's in R mode. 
Moving on, you've got the suspension settings. So of course, we'll stiffen up the dampers. These are electronically adjusted. Uh, if you put it in R, or you can put it in comfort for a little bit softer ride. And then finally, you have the stability settings here on the right. So you can turn everything off by pushing it down. You can leave it in normal, or you can put it in R, and that'll allow for a little bit of a slip angle, but it won't allow it to get too large uh, so that it's out of control. So, you know, kind of a, a fun mode in between for those of us who can't drift on a daily basis. So you have your simple gear shift right here. You have it in park, push that down. You can put it into reverse, over into neutral, down into automatic, or then you can hold it over and put it into the manual mode. Push button start right there in the center. You do have two cup holders and also a little storage compartment right here with this pretty cool little Nismo uh, USB port. It's kind of a nice touch. And then finally, another storage compartment. You've got a small little glove box there for your materials. You do have rear seats. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's going to be sitting in them, but if they were, they'd have a place to put their drink. Now, as far as visibility, uh, somewhat narrow for the front windshield, but overall not too bad. Looking to the sides, you actually have pretty decent visibility. That said, your blind spot is kind of blocked up by this B pillar as well as the C pillar back there, so you'll have to lean forward a little bit to check that and make sure your mirrors are adjusted properly. Looking out the rear, it's actually pretty surprising. There's a decent amount of visibility out that. Uh, I thought it would have been a little bit worse, and it's honestly not too bad. And you, of course, have that large rear wing to look back at. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, I'm sold. I want to buy the Nismo GTR. But then you're thinking, well, does it have enough trunk space? So let's find out. Does it have enough trunk space? Actually, a decent amount of space in there. could certainly fit a suitcase or two, a uh, decent amount of luggage or some things like that in there. So nothing all that unreasonable for what kind of car this is. Okay, back to the test drive. So let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, throttle pedal feel, pretty sensitive. You touch that thing and it's going. Brake pedal feel, actually surprisingly not that uh, sensitive. It's got a little bit of a cushion to it. You know, it's stiff for sure, uh, but you can definitely have plenty of feedback in it. And so it actually has a pretty good feel to it slowing down. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so let's put it over into this manual mode and see how this uh, dual clutch is doing. So I'm gonna... Wow, that's fast. Upshift wasn't that fast. Upshift wasn't that fast. Well, let's see the downshift again. Oh yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Rev matches it and then pops it in gear. Fantastic. I just gotta worry about not speeding and try not to just grin childishly this whole video and not be biased because I'm in the Godzilla of Godzillas. This thing is incredible. So these seats are very snug. This whole driving position honestly is, is definitely a unique experience. I'm held into this car. I'm not going anywhere uh, and I really like that. It's a really cozy feeling to it and it's something I genuinely enjoy. I think there's people out there that would probably be a little bit claustrophobic in this kind of thing, uh, but that's the kind of car you're getting. I was also expecting this to kind of feel bigger. I mean, this is kind of a big, heavy machine when you look at the specs, uh, and it definitely doesn't feel like it. It feels like a small, kind of nimble little device uh, that you're really snug in, and you're in this tiny little jet fighter. It's, it's a really cool experience. 150 grand starting price, so this isn't something that'll be in my driveway anytime soon, but what a brilliant car for 150 grand. You know, the things it's competing with, uh, it can do some things that they cannot, and so you have to admire this even for what it is, and even for the fact that the Nissan GTR used to start at such a reasonable price, and now it's gotten a tad ridiculous. So down into first gear, and we will. Oh my gosh. It's just dumb how fast it is. I can't, I can't. Here's the thing, cars like this, uh, ultimately on the road, it's pointless. You can't appreciate it. You can't come anywhere near the limit that this is capable of, and so you truly can't appreciate it for what it is. Is it awesome? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Are you going to beat everyone at a red light? Yes. But you need to take this thing onto a track. You've got that big wing in the rear view mirror just reminding you like, hey, you're in a race car. Uh, and so something like this, it can't be fully appreciated. It probably can't even be 50% appreciated in an environment like this. There's our cousin, the uh, Nissan Nismo 370Z. I was just in that a little bit earlier. Very fun car, very cool that it has downshifting. Uh, but as I was saying, something like this, you gotta take it out to attract, fully appreciate it. And that's probably the case with the regular GTR as well. And that's probably where you'd be able to tell, you know, the difference between this one and that one. Uh, as far as the tuning behind it, this one's probably a little bit more stiff, uh, a little more race oriented rather than comfort oriented. And so there's gonna be those distinct differences when you're really pushing it versus when you're just kind of, you know, hanging out in traffic. 
uh, people are staring at you and taking pictures of you. You get the, kind of the glamour of uh, owning a supercar, but none of the fun part of owning a supercar, which is the driving. You've got a nice little whistle too, like you can hear those turbos and, and that's pretty that's pretty exciting. So with the steering wheel, same story as with the 370, you actually move all of the display up and down with you as far as the speedometer and tachometer. Uh, it lets you know what gear you're in, your fuel gauge, things like that. That all moves with it uh, as you move the steering column. So you pretty much have a, a clear line of sight at the gauges, which is nice. So how does the steering feel? Well, it does seem to have a pretty tight ratio, so it doesn't take turning the wheel very much to actually get the vehicle to turn, and it's also very responsive. So the second you start turning, the vehicle is moving in the direction you're pointing it. So overall, steering feels fantastic to me. Uh, I'm not putting it at the limit, I'm just testing that from a, you know, compared to other things. That said, you know, it's got a stiff suspension, so everything's basically right in this kind of environment for it to be very responsive, to turn very quick, because nothing is moving. There's no play in the suspension at these low speeds, so it's going to feel extremely responsive versus if you're out on a track where you've got higher g-forces, you know, it could be a bit different of an experience. But overall, based on how it feels here, I would imagine that it feels pretty rigid and pretty precise out on a track as well. got a wave from a Subaru owner. They knew. They saw me and they knew that I have an STI uh, and so they waved to me anyways. I love that. You know, the community amongst STI owners is a great one. Here I am driving a GTR so I shouldn't be saying that, but us uh, Subaru STI owners, we can appreciate a GTR uh, as we bought a very, 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 very baby version of it. Half the horsepower, uh, not nearly as technological, uh, but a very cool car nonetheless. This car is just way more extreme for, you know, five times the price. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about this car. It's just a rocket. Hard on the brakes. Wow, what brakes. <laughs> Those brakes are great. This thing is great. I mean, honestly, this, this experience is, uh, I'm kind of just geeking out a little bit because I've never driven anything really like this, and it's, uh, it's a reflection on where Engineering Explained has come. You know, I started out with a whiteboard in a college uh, dorm room, basically, and here I am in a Nissan GTR Nismo edition uh, rolling around in Washington. Life is good, I gotta say, and this car, phenomenal.